See, so you, you would think this this entire region <laughs> was uh, was what they call Egypt today, but you see right here it says Nubia region. This entire area, including Israel, including Saudi Arabia, including uh, um, what they call the east coast of Africa, this entire continent was called Nubia or it was called Ethiopia. It's not possible that Ethiopia was located right here where it says Nubia, but then the name of the ocean over here on the west coast is named Ethiopia. And these are not people that controlled the entire continent. And it, 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 you understand what I'm saying? The, 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 the deception is so deep that the maps, they've, they've changed the maps and the schematics of the maps to such an extreme to make sure you have no idea that the scripture is accurate. So they want people like these uh, guys that are running out of the out of the Bible, saying the Bible is is not true, or you know what's written in the Bible is fake. They they want that, but you can't fool. You can fool most, but you can't fool all. You can fool some, but you're not going to fool everybody. And this the, again, this is Stanford University. Okay. This is a German map. See that? So the Germans, the Ashkenazim, the Europeans, they know exactly who they were taking into the slave trade if they were following the Bible as they say they were. Con? So, let's see. When was this map made? See that right there? Ogilvy, John Ogilvy. Between 1600 and 1676, and John Ogilvy is the uh, planner of this map, and this map was imprinted in 1670 in uh, London. Let's go to another map. All right. So here's another map. So this is supposed to be a world map, right? Now you see where it says Tropicus Capricornus, right? This is Madagascar. You see that says Zanzibar. Now you see what this says right here? Libya, Africa, Ethiopia, Mauritania. Uh, can't really see that word too well. Let's see if we can zoom in. I think that's calling it the Ivory Coast or Condinari. I can't really make that one out. But you can see here. They call that Hispaniola. Now you're off of the west coast of Africa over into the Caribbean. You see that? So I want you to understand. I'm, I'm just giving you a little tour of these maps so you understand how to do your research and, and studies and, and, and use the scripture because the scripture is yet in effect. Con. So just have a quick look at how these maps are constructed from back then. And by the way, this guy's name is Sebastian Munster or Munster Sebastian. He drew this map. He and uh, David Kendall or Kendall David. They drew this map between 1489 and 1552. Uh, well, that's their, uh, I guess that's their birth or in death. So 
just look at the timelines. You know, this map was imprinted in 1550. Look at the timelines of these people r drawing these maps back then and what you see today. And then you pick up the Bible and read it. Uh, and you'll see that the Bible, you know, uh, <laughs> there's a great deception that has taken place just with the mapping alone. Just to make sure you're fooled out of believing the scriptures. All right. Trace yourself through history. Now, this example that's up on the screen, this book, um, this book is like, I think this book was written early 1500s. So you're talking about a book that's over 14 years, um, excuse me, over 500 years old. It's talking about the um, various indigenous tribes throughout the Americas, right? And then you have the descriptions of them, their languages, how they dress, their customs, cultures, and everything. Everything that the Europeans saw when they first started coming over here, the, the different colonists, right? And um, this is important too, because you have um, you have images in there too. You have um, paintings, drawings. This one um, showing the people in Peru, right? If you see up here, Lake Titicaca, that's in Peru. So you see some of the indigenous people not really wearing any clothes or very little clothes at all, but then you see these people wearing robes and with turbans on. Okay, this guy has turbans with a feather or with feathers in the front, right? So they're wearing robes and have the turbans. And these are the indigenous people in Peru. All right, we wear the turban on the fez. Just showing you Peru, that's uh, Machu Picchu. These are the people who actually built these cities, these temples, these pyramids charted the stars, actually had free energy systems throughout the Americas, right? I mean, all the way up um, from South to Central uh, North America. I just saw something earlier today speaking about how they found some more Mayan temples hidden in the um, really difficult to reach areas in the jungle in Guatemala. They also used satellite imaging to find pyramids and temples cities built that are hidden in the jungles like they can't physically see it but they can see it with the satellite imagery because they're like in hard to reach areas in the amazon jungle in brazil so all throughout the americas uh this just some images from ohio there's a pyramid in uh, miamisburg you wouldn't even know it's there because it's in the middle of a neighborhood and it's surrounded by a golf course right they have a little tiny little park there to preserve it, but you wouldn't even know it's there. And then doing some research specifically on this Miamisburg mound, which is it's a lot bigger maybe than it looks in this picture. It's actually pretty impressive. Doing research on this, I found out that when the Europeans found this mound in Miamisburg, it was covered in stone slabs. It's a pyramid. It was covered in stone slabs. And so these people built these temples, these pyramids. They actually built universities, libraries all over the world. But we're focused on the Americas. Um, many of these pyramids, like the uh, the ones in Teo, uh, Teotihuacan in, um, in Mexico, when the um, Europeans first encountered these, a lot of them looked like the ones found all over North America covered in grass, even had trees and stuff growing on them, right? So they had to go and excavate it. Um, when you go inside of the temples in Bonampak, when you look at the murals on it, it's crazy because you can actually see people wearing the royal headdress, wearing fezes and turbans. People have braids and dreadlocks. It's undeniable. You can actually see that in some of these images too, right? And so we're talking about tracing ourselves back through history. Now the prophet said that we were in North, South, Central America. That's included Mexico and the Atlantis islands. All of this, 
right? Not saying we were the only people over here because you also had people that came over to Bering Strait. You also had um, the Vikings that came in way before um, the rest of um, like the uh, English and the French came, right? Like they, they tell you about Eric the Red, but they don't say anything about the Moors. So I want to let you know why we're saying these people were Moors, not just because they had, they had the, the fez and the turban on, even though that should be a dead giveaway. Okay, not just because Europeans in the um, 1800s, 1700s were writing books, ha- making all of these sculptures and statues depicting the Blackamoor Indians, right? Like they knew. They knew, okay, the Indians there, they're the Blackamoors. Blackamoor was synonymous with Indian. We're speaking about the Indians in America. And this was just known. So throughout the 17, 1800s, you had all of these sculptures, all of these statues made depicting the indigenous people here as Blackamoors. It pretty much became synonymous with indigenous Americans. But not only because of that, and then not only because of the similarities. I mean, like I said, you have this stuff painted and even carved into walls, even carved into stone. We're still the same people, even still doing the same things with our hair, right? Like you see Gucci Mane here with all the gold on, the the statue that's next to him. This is a priceless statue that was depicted of an indigenous Floridian, a Blackamoor Indian from Florida. With all these jewels, he's, you know, a king or prince with all this gold on, right? So it's still, you know, we're, we're doing it from a low status because we've been disconnected from our true nature, our true um, origin, right? They're not saying, hey, just believe it just because the Easter Island heads, which is like off to the Calais in South America. Don't just believe it because they were wearing fezzes. And because all of these Blackamoor Indians wearing fezzes and turbans, something that this man in the 1920s returned to us I'm not saying just believe this because the ancient Olmecs carved themselves out of stone wearing a fez with the tassel, with the rope tassel, right? It's not a coincidence. This belongs to other countries in the European bloc. What do we mean by that? You see all those names? None of those names are African names. And you see by then, they changed the name of the ocean to Atlantic Ocean. Because the, the, the continent of Ethiopia had been conquered by the European. Let me zoom in a little bit so you can see this. You see that name? Amsterdam. That's not a name. That's not an African name. All right. Charles Fort. That's not African. Fort Royal. Those are not African names. Those are all European names. So now we're going to deal with the same guy, Herman Mall. This is a map from 1716. Finalized around 1732. Let's zoom in and see what this guy is saying. Because he just told you that the Europeans changed the name of Ethiopia to all those European names, right? And you can still see here on this same map, not the same map, but another revised map. He shows all of these European names all along the West Coast, right? He even calls this the Atlantic Ocean. You see that? But guess what he calls that? Ethiopian Sea. Because all of that water was yet Ethiopia. You see this right here? This says Ethiopia. So guess where Negro land is located? In Ethiopia. Khan? Right, so this is uh, one of the last ones I want to show you. 
hope you're ready for this one. This is a general and particular description of Africa, written in Latin by uh, Joan uh, Lotus. Uh, I'm, I'm not able to pronounce the Latin names too well. But you see, this guy is a uh, professor, philosopher. So let's see. Let's see what they have to say here. Hope you're ready for this. Let's deal with this spot right here. See, they call this Egypt, right? The Egyptians were conquered people by that time. You see, Jerusalem was still was still using the I. Yerushalayim, or Yerushalayim, it was still the letter I. This was called Asia Minor. And you see north of Israel, you see uh, Alexandria. Asia Minor. Arabia. Mecca. And you see right here. This is yet the continent of Ethiopia, the continent of Africa. See that? So how do we figure this out? How do we know? What's the name of the ocean right there? The entire ocean was called Ethiopicus. So all of this land was Ethiopia. I know it's hard to believe, huh? So let me help you see it a little bit closer. Let me zoom in a little bit tighter. You ready? Let's go to South Africa, what they call South Africa today. South Africa was originally called right here, Ethiopia. Con. So you see the deception. The entire continent was named Ethiopia. The entire continent. Not part of it, but the entire continent. Upper and lower Ethiopia. The waterways were named after the kingdom that ruled the entire continent. Con. So let's deal with this a little bit more. A little bit more. You see, this map is made out to the Honorable Charles Earl of Peterborough and Monmouth, etc. This map of Africa, according to uh, according to the newest and most exact observations and most humbly dedicated. So let's see. You see this right here? What do they call the continent of Africa? Ethiopia. This country is wholly unknown to the Europeans. So what was the name of this water? Ethiopian Sea. The Ethiopian Sea. And you see that word right there. Negro. Negroes. They were using this word for a very long time. 
very long time. That that's supposed to be Angola. This is supposed to be uh, um, uh, Mozambique. It's supposed to be South Africa, right? No, no, it's not. It's called Ethiopia. <laughs> 